Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to leverage ChatGPT for course creation. So what I could do is I can go ahead and get started by asking ChatGPT that I'm interested in creating an online course and I have no idea what to do. Basically, I'm just starting out and I only have $1,000 budget for equipment or maybe for course uh, hosting services. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT the following. I'd like to create an online course. What do I need to do? Let's go ahead and test it out. If you press enter on your keyboard, here we go. Creating an online course can be a rewarding experience, both financially and personally. Here are some steps that you can take to create an online course with a budget of $1,000. First, you need to determine your course topic and target audience. You need to plan your course content. You need to choose a course platform. This could be Teachable, Udemy, uh, Thinkific. You can also create, you need to step forward to create your course content. You need to record and edit your videos, and then you need to launch your course. Keep in mind that $1,000 may not cover all the expenses associated with creating an online course, but it's possible to create a high quality course on a budget with careful planning and resourcefulness. Okay. That's a good start. Let's assume that I would like to design a new course on, let's say, Python programming. And I would like to get some help on creating a course outline. So if I say, I'm designing a new course on Python programming, can you help me write a course outline? Here we go. Sure. Here is a simple course outline for beginner level Python programming. First, you need to start with an introduction to Python, overview of Python programming language, installing and setting up Python environment, writing and executing basic Python programs, introduction to Python data types and variables. Actually, if I wanted to write something like that, it's actually going to be very close to this. Next, you need to cover control structures and functions, covering loops, functions, recursion, and conditional statements, or if else statements. And then you need to cover data structures in Python, such as lists, tuples, dictionaries, indexing and slicing, and then cover file handling, how to deal with files, object-oriented programming, web scraping and data visualization, covering libraries, again, pretty powerful, it's giving you as well examples, and also concluding the course with a project, basically implementing a real-world project using Python programming concepts learned throughout the course. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's assume that, for example, I'm interested in, let's say, lists, tuples, and dictionaries. And what I could do is I can go ahead and ask ChatGPT to basically give me a rough idea about a script. And I'm going to say, write a video script for a lesson. And then maybe I'm going to grab this, for example, lists, tuples, and dictionaries. Here we go. I'm going to tell you one. Sure. Here is a sample video script for a lesson on lists, tuples, and dictionaries. Welcome to this lesson on lists, tuples, and dictionaries. There are important data structures that you encounter frequently in Python programming that can be used for a wide range of applications. Let's start with lists. A list is a collection of items which can be used uh, basically to have multiple data types as integers, strings, and even lists. You can create a list in Python by enclosing a comma-separated sequence of values with square brackets. It's pretty incredible because this is actually right. It's not basically making stuff up. Now it's kind of adjusting its content to have some kind of creativity here. But when it comes to the actual definitions of these terminologies, they are actually pretty accurate. Working with lists, what are tuples, how to work with tuples, what are dictionaries, how to work with dictionaries, and then ended up with conclusion. Again, pretty incredible. And of course, you can use it kind of as a quick starting point to your course. Okay. What, if, for example, if I'm interested in identifying what are the key learning outcomes or objectives for a given course? What about key learning objectives or outcomes for this course? And if you press enter on your keyboard, here we go. It's going to tell you, well, sure. Here are some key learning outcomes that students should achieve. First, you need to understand the difference between lists, tuples, and dictionaries. Be able to create and manipulate lists in Python, including in accessing individual elements or performing list slicing. Understand the uh, immutability of tuples in Python be able to create and manipulate dictionaries in Python, be able to choose the appropriate data structure in a given problem or task in Python. And please note that right now, it's kind of giving you key learning outcomes for that specific lesson that we picked 
about lists, tuples, and dictionaries. Of course, you can go ahead and change that by asking for key learning objectives or outcomes for the entire course. So let's actually go ahead and test it out. So if I say, what about writing key learning outcomes for the entire course? And let's see if that works. Here we go. Sure. Here are the key learning objectives for the whole course. So I'm going to tell you one. First, you need to understand the fundamentals of programming, data structures, control structures, functions, and algorithms. Be able to write and execute basic Python programs using variables, loops, and conditional statements. You notice right now that it's not just talking about a specific lecture or lesson. Now it's talking about the entire course, okay? Be able to work with various data structures in Python, like tuples and dictionaries, write files, we we'll do web scraping and visualization and be able to implement a real-world project using Python programming. Again, super powerful. Okay, what, for example, if you'd like to uh, identify who will be your target audience for this course? So if I say, what about, let's say, the target audience? And if you press enter, here we go, it's going to tell you, well, sure, here's a description of the target audience for an introductory course on Python programming. Target audience could be, let's say, beginners who are interested in learning Python programming language. No prior programming experience is required, although familiarity with basic computer concepts such as files, di directories, and data types is helpful. The course is suitable for anyone who wants to learn programming for personal or professional purposes, including students, professionals, technical, and non-technical fields. Okay. What, for example, if you are interested in learning or kind of writing the prerequisites for the course. If you press enter, here we go, it's going to tell you what, sure. Here are the prerequisites for the course, basic computer skills, basic math skills, logical reasoning, English language proficiency, and no prior programming experience is required. All right. Sometimes if you have an online course, sometimes you would like to engage your students. And you can do that by either including some quizzes, for example, or maybe by launching a poll. So what I could do here is I can say, well, write a 10 question poll to engage my students who are taking my artificial intelligence masterclass. So if you go ahead and press enter on your keyboard, here we go. What you see right now is going to tell you, well, how confident are you in your ability to define artificial intelligence? Have you worked with any AI tools or frameworks before this class? How do you believe are the most significant benefits of using AI in the industry? How do you see AI affecting the job market in the coming areas or years? Do you believe that AI should be regulated? If so, to what extent? Again, pretty incredible questions. And these are not trivial questions. They're actually real, you know, like um, I work in this field and these are actually real questions that I could ask possibly. Can you think of any current applications of AI that could benefit from further research and development? What are some of the most, most exciting advances in AI? that you have seen recently and how do you see them impacting the future? Again, super powerful. Okay, let's assume that at the end, for example, of a given, let's say, lesson, you decided to write a quiz to students to, to kind of assess their knowledge um, in AI and machine learning. And what I could do here is I can say the following. Could you please write a 10 quiz questions about artificial intelligence and deep learning? Include four multiple choices with each question and include the correct answers at the end as well. So here we go. What you see right now is you have been able to see many questions that are available right now. What is the main goal of artificial intelligence? And it's going to tell you the answer as well. What is deep learning? And you can see the answer here. What is the purpose of neural networks? What is which of the following is a popular deep learning framework? What is backpropagation? What is an activation function? What is overfitting? What is transfer learning? And then what is a convolution neural network or CNN, along with the answer associated with it as well. Okay, let's assume that you'd like maybe to write a promotional email for the launch of a new course on artificial intelligence and deep learning. And the uh, coupon code, let's say, I'm going to call it IAI discount. And I'm going to also specify some features of the course. And of course, the more detailed you are, the better. So here I'm going to say the course is 10 hours with slides, code scripts, and Q&A support as an example. So if you go ahead and press enter on your keyboard, here we go. What you see right now is basically, uh, it's going to tell you, well, hello, we are excited to announce the launch of our brand new course, AI and Deep Learning from Zero to Hero. In this course, we'll, talk, we'll take you on a journey for the very basics of AI and Deep Learning. And you will find that basically here, ChatGPT embedded the information that we included 
as part of the prompt and it's going to tell you with over 10 hours of content including detailed slides code scripts and Q&A support this course is perfect for anyone looking to learn and enhance their skills in AI and deep learning you can also see the discount here and the best part as a special launch offer we are offering a 30% discount on the course uh, fee for the first 100 students who enroll using the coupon code AI discount at checkout and you will find that basically chat GPT is kind of created some sort of urgency in the call to action as well, which is again, pretty incredible. And it's gonna tell you as well, what to expect from the course. We're gonna show you, showing you all the different topics. Don't miss the opportunity. Click here to learn more about the course and enroll today. Okay. And of course you can also uh, leverage chat GPT if you like to maybe uh, if you have, let's say a teacher assistant that can help, for example, draft some skeleton answer to your students' questions. And that's pretty much it. That's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and see you.